This week on Beacon Web News, we check out Winterfest in downtown North Adams. Then we celebrate women of color with a dinner at MCLA, and we get to play with piglets at the annual Barn Babies event. We'll also meet the Queer Student Union for this week's club feature. That's coming up next on Beacon Web News. Welcome to the February 21st episode of Beacon Web News. I'm Samantha Niskarn. First, let's check in with Andrew Strout to get a sneak peek at this week's weather. Andrew? Well, Sam, it may seem like spring has come early today, but temperatures are about to drop back down for the rest of the week. But I'll be back soon with a full seven-day forecast. Well, the weather has been all over the place, Andrew, but the people of North Adams are still in the winter spirit. BWN's Maggie Allen chilled out at Winterfest this past weekend and has more on the icy fun. Spring may be just around the corner, but the people of North Adams are holding on to winter for just a little bit longer during this weekend's annual Winterfest. This brings the people out of their homes and onto the streets of North Adams for a day full of wintry fun. Kelly Kozak of Mountain One Bank tells BWN why it's so important for the bank to contribute. So Winterfest is a downtown celebration to get people out and about in downtown North Adams during the, the cold winter months. So it's important to us to be part of the community and we have done this event um, for the 12 years that I've been here at the bank. So we do cookies and cocoa um, for the community and then we always have a secondary event to something fun to do. Today we had the McCann Robotics team. The robotics team from McCann Technology School participates in Winterfest for a variety of reasons. A couple reasons, actually. I mean, reason number one is it's important to get, you know, science, technology, engineering, all that stuff, all the STEM factors out there. Um, and, of course, the selfish one is we really like kids to come to McCann Technical School, too. So it's, uh, it's a great school, and we think that what we do in science and technology is important. Lieutenant John Pachioric from North Adams Fire Department shared his thoughts on Winterfest and its role in the community. I just think that it's nice to have something, even in the winter, if it's snowing out, it's just, it's just a great event. It gets a lot of people out at a time of year when nobody usually gets out. It brings a lot of people. His favorite event is? Chowder Cook-Off is one of the, one of the all-time favorites. One of the staple events of Winterfest is the ice sculpting. This was the first year that the sculptures were judged and a $100 prize was given to the winner. The contest brought new and old faces. This is my first time at uh, North Adams Winterfest, but, and it's my second time carving ice. Some even carved ice for a cause. Uh, we're carving ice for Pop Cares, which is a local cancer charity that donates all money raised, gets back locally to Northern Berkshire uh, cancer patients and their caregivers. And so far we've given over to 610 people. So it's great. We have a lot of support from the community. That's great. Unfortunately, the events at Windsor Lake tomorrow has been canceled due to inclement weather, but today had such a great turnout. For Beacon Web News, I'm Maggie Allen. If you're bummed about missing Winterfest, you have another chance to party in the streets at Thunderfest in Adams. This Saturday, February 24th from 12 to 5 p.m., you can visit the Adams Visitor Center for an evening of food and drink, live music, retail vendors, and the snow train. Admission is free. And tonight, February 21st, the Multicultural Resource Center will be showing a screening of the film The Wood. The movie is about a writer reminiscing about his youth while dealing with a nervous friend on his wedding day in a coming-of-age drama. You can watch the film in the Sullivan Lounge at 7 p.m. and snacks will be provided. You can join the celebration of MCLA's male faculty, students, staff, and alumni of color at the Men of Color Dinner. This dinner is tomorrow, February 22nd at 6 p.m. in Murdoch 218. If you have any questions, feel free to contact Michael Obasahan at m.obasahan at mcla.edu. Last week, Karen Canella went to the Women of Color dinner where she caught up with some students and enjoyed some good food. I'm here in the social hall where women of color gather together to celebrate one another. It's hard to go day to day just feeling good about ourselves. So I decided to do this day just so everyone can know that they are important 
and that they are recognized here even in the middle of nowhere. With these words, Michaela Serrano, a student leader on campus, opens the Women of Color Dinner. The dinner was an effort to celebrate being a black woman and to provoke interaction between the ladies. Williams College girls were some of the guests amongst the crowd. Sophomore Abigail Domo tells us what her favorite part of the dinner was. I love that there's a huge community here and like it's there, everyone's like really supportive and I love the fact that everyone got dressed up. Junior Eva Weeks describes what being a woman of color is to her. My identity, like who I am, like my dad was African American and he passed away and it really shaped me and like wanted to figure out where I come from and who I am as a person. Weeks tells us why she thinks the event is significant for the MCLA community. I think it's great for all types of different people to come together and like unite as one and that's what our school really needs. Title IX coordinator Teresa O'Brien tells Beacon Web News about what she enjoyed most from the dinner. Sort of on a personal note, as someone who works at the college and works with young folks who have a transformative experience while they're in college, to get them, you know, to the point where they're running events and enjoying events and that's kind of neat to see. O'Brien also tells us why she thinks it's important for MCLA students to continue hosting events like these. I would love to see more events where people get a chance to sit together and fellowship and, and talk about the good things and, um, that happen here at MCLA. Also, I had a nice opportunity to meet um, some folks from Williams College, so it was also a good opportunity to meet, meet some colleagues from Williams. The dinner included a spoken word piece written and performed by Donye Smith, food and drinks, table Peace centers with the names of different colored women that made history, a video of different women speaking on their love for being black, and bath bombs and goodie bags for the end. Dominique Burgess from Williams College tells us what she enjoyed most from the event. Meeting people outside of the Williams bubble um, and really like getting off campus I really liked, especially with like other college students. Burgess tells us why she thinks it's important for MCLA and Williams College students to do more events together. I definitely um, think that we need to, especially because we've gotten this like initial event started, I think that this was a good gateway into um, having more things like this happen between um, our two colleges. Michaela Serrano, who hosted the event, spoke to us about how important black women are and why it is vital to remind them that they matter. Women, we're very important, we're very vital to life itself. You know, we, we're the only ones who can, you know, give birth, so <laughs> we're very vital to life. Um, we've done a lot to contribute to different societies, to the world and I feel like sometimes we underestimate who we are as people and it's important to know that we're powerful and we're strong and I feel like we, we forget that, especially in today's society. Serrano tells us why she thought it was important to specifically have a women of color dinner. I definitely wanted to do something that promotes um, self-love and self-care for those who are, come from color and what better way to do it for the women um, of this community who we often go unnoticed and often go around feeling you know low in self-esteem and different things like that so I thought this was the combination of the two things was the perfect um, idea for a dinner. The event was a success and many of the women left full and happy with the food. This is just one of the many events that will be happening for Black History Month. For Beacon Web News, I'm Karen Canella. Aramark is hosting a Swipe Plus 6 dinner in the Campus Center Marketplace from 5.30 to 7 p.m. tomorrow, February 22nd. The dinner costs one meal swipe and $6 of declining balance to participate. The meal is first come first serve and will feature dishes from Mexico, Germany, Korea, Cuba and Greece. Last weekend, the Student Activities Council hosted one of the most beloved annual events to grace this campus, Barn Babies. BWN's Karina Matera was there to check out some chicks and play with some kids. The traveling petting zoo, Barn Babies, visited MCLA's campus once again and brought along their furry friends. All the animals come from farms and breeders near their barn in Lakeville, Massachusetts. At their barn, they socialize the animals through the program when they're about one to two months old. These animals get to be cuddled and loved until the day that they finally find their forever home. So with us today, we have four puppies, 18 bunnies, one pig, one goat, uh, 
five chickens. We have a bunch of animals today so that pig, uh, people can hop inside with the puppies, the goat, or the pig. And then as for the bunnies, chickens, or kitties, we wrap them up in blankets for everybody to hold. And look at his face. <sighs> That's what I enjoy. I think they enjoy them because all the animals, how they're super cute and they're super fuzzy and they're looking nice to play with and to hold. I heard that there was going to be pigs and I've always wanted to cuddle with a little baby pig and now my dreams are coming true so I'm really happy right now. <laughs> She's very friendly, loves to cuddle, she even squeals if you try to take her off somebody's lap. <laughs> The goal of Barn Babies visiting MCLA's campus is for the cute animals to relax students. The students really enjoy taking the time to not think about stress and play with the animals. We go through a lot of stress through this, through this semester and it's a great way, like I said before, it's a great way to relieve stress and who doesn't want to come and see cute baby animals? I came because college is super stressful and petting these tiny little nuggets are just the best and it's a good stress reliever. They have a lot of varieties and like I like the ones that are in like the blankets and stuff. It looks like you're carrying a little baby and like oh it's so adorable. It's like your little non-responsibility that you just get to cuddle with. It's so adorable. <laughs> Being able to hold the different animals and just everything. Everything's fun. I can interact with small animals and they won't bite me. I'm a huge animal lover and I was really excited to come and play with the little babies. I can hold this pretty little kitty. As you can tell, this event has been very successful for the past few years. For BQM News, I'm Karina Matera. Saturday, February 24th, Toonerville Trolley Records will be hosting a vinyl night. The event includes listening, buying, trading, and learning about records with music enthusiasts. Uptown Tunnel Coffee will be on the menu featuring some of their specialty drinks. The event is at 81 Spring Street in Williamstown from 6 to 8 p.m. For more information, make sure to visit Vinyl Night on Facebook. The Hoosick River Watershed Association is hosting a snowshoe walk at Natural Bridge in North Adams on Sunday, February 25th. The walk will start at the entrance to the state park at 1 p.m., where short history lessons about the area will be given. To pre-register for the walk, email s.mcmahon at hoorwa.org. Starting on Monday, February 26th, Merck will be hosting My Back is Beautiful at the MCLA Design Lab. This event takes place over the course of three days with live performances at 7 on Monday. This is a free event to celebrate Black History Month with various works of art. Anyone is welcome. Vans to the venue will depart at 6.15 p.m. from Montana Street. Now, let's get the rest of that weather forecast with Andrew Strout. Thanks, Sam. Tomorrow, there's a high of 32 degrees with a low of 25, and there will be snow showers throughout the day before clearing up for the night. And I hope everyone packed their rain jackets because it's going to be raining all weekend long, starting on Friday morning with a high of 36 and a low of 34. So it's not going to be as cold as it has been for the past few weeks, but still cold enough to keep a jacket on. Sunday morning, the rain will continue before clearing up in the evening. Luckily, the rain will finally stop on Monday, where there will be a high of 46 and a low of 26, with partly cloudy skies for the rest of the week. The temperature is going to hover around lows of 20 and highs of 40 degrees until Wednesday, when we will see you again. So it looks like another rainy and cloudy week ahead for North Adams. This has been Andrew Strout with your seven-day forecast. Back to you, Sam. Thanks, Andrew. MCLA's Wellness Center is hosting a wellness fair on Wednesday, February 28th from 11 to 2 p.m. in Venable Gym. There will be activities, raffles and giveaways, as well as tips and advice on how to stay safe and healthy this flu season. In case of snow, the rain date is March 1st. For this week's club feature, BWN's Julia Texera met with the Queer Student Union. Julia? As a diverse community, MCLA ensures that all students have a platform to feel safe, and the Queer Student Union is one of those clubs. Under the Identity and Gender Equality Resource Center at MCLA, the Queer Student Union is a club on campus that looks to educate and provide a safe space for students. Uh, QSU uh, stands for Queer Student Union and we are a club that focuses on providing a safe space for queer students and questioning students to uh, be queer and questioning. Um, and we also work to uh, inform both those students and the wider campus community about queer issues, and we work to improve the state of queer students on campus. 
Club president Emery Bibbins goes on to explain how important QSU is to the MCLA community. Uh, it's important because there are a lot of queer students uh, at MCLA and to give them a space to talk about about their experiences and to be around people like them and who understand them is important because it uh, improves mental health, it improves, uh, it makes people happy and it um, start, it's also a platform for change. Vice President Victoria Rodriguez and Treasurer Eamon Hanlon also talk about the importance of having a safe space for students. Uh, I think that um, a club like this one that's about um, like community and like representation and like like a safe space is important on any college campus. Um, I know that the MCLA campus has like a particularly large like LGBT community in itself. So I think that having like a club like this is like important to any community, but like our community. Um, I think it's really important because it offers a good safe space for people who don't necessarily have that um, in other places on campus. Secretary Hunter Charade explains how grateful he is for a club like QSU. Um, so I never had a GSA, um, which is a gay straight alliance in my school. And so I came to QSU for a sense of community and then they needed help, and so I helped because that's what I like to do. QSU meets every Monday at 8 p.m. in Campus Room Center 324A. And for Beacon Web News, I'm Julia Texera. MCLA is celebrating Women's History Month with a writing workshop hosted by award-winning author Jaina Laiz from Fired Up Magazine on March 1st from 4 to 6 p.m. in Murdoch Room 208. Come to write about your passions with the possibility of publication in Fired Up Magazine. Sign-ups are at the Women's Center and Campus Center, room 323. And that is it for this week's episode. To stay up to date with BWN, you can follow us on social media. As always, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week.